Hey everybody, I'm Dylan with On One, and today we are going to be working inside of HDR using On One Photo Raw 2018. We're going to be covering more in depth on how to use HDR, as well as some of my favorite HDR effects and editing techniques. So to get started in HDR, we're going to start in Browse. I've grouped my photos together and placed them in a subfolder for easy finding later. I like to do this with HDR photos so that when I need to merge them, I can find all my exposure brackets in one subfolder. On One Photo Raw makes it incredibly easy to find my brackets, merge, and immediately start editing. I'm going to select all of the exposures I want to merge into an HDR photo, and I'm going to go to my right bumper and I'm going to select HDR. This will take us into HDR in On One Photo Raw. Here you will see a preview of your HDR photo, a bar of controls directly underneath it, an adjustment section to the right, and a film strip view of your bracketed photos underneath. Where I like to start in HDR is in the control section. This is right below my preview. I like to start with the ghosting in a photo first. Ghosting in HDR is simply referring to the movement in a scene across the exposure brackets that isn't in the same position in each exposure. For example, water. Let's say for example that you're shooting a waterfall scene. That waterfall is going to be in the same position throughout every exposure. However, since the water is flowing, the water is going to be in a different position throughout every exposure. Consequently, there will be a little bit of ghosting where the water is flowing. If you were to put de-ghosting on that waterfall, it would make the waterfall look more like it was taken with a faster shutter speed, freezing the frame. You'll notice that one of the images is super selected. This is the image you are going to use for de-ghosting. This is going to tell HDR which image you would like to use for your motion if you had de-ghosting turned on. With this particular set of brackets, I think I'm going to leave deghosting off. I like that sort of soft, long exposure look on the water. I do like to leave the default look of the HDR photo to natural. It shows me a basic HDR look preview and sort of gives me an idea of my starting HDR point. After I've chosen my default look, I'm going to make sure I check where I want my photo to be opened up in next. I like to have my photos open up in effects because we've already set our basic tone and color for the photo. Why not have it open up in effects where we can start creatively adjusting? The great thing about HDR and On One Photo Raw is that all of your adjustments are saved. They can be re-edited at any time. Any tone and color adjustment or HDR look adjustment we made in HDR will be saved and after we save this photo, we can go back into develop to change tone and color, or we can go into effects to readjust our HDR look. For now, let's get into adjusting our photo's tone and color. To begin adjusting the tone and color, I like to start with the exposure. What I like to do when adjusting my exposure for my HDR photo is I like to hold down the J key. And what the J key is going to do is that's going to show me my clipping warnings. And what clipping warnings are going to show you is your true whites and true blacks in your photo. Now red is going to show your true whites, while blue is going to show your true blacks. It's always nice to have a little bit of true black in your photo, but true white can make your photo seem overexposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the exposure just a little bit, just to bring down some of that true white, right about there. Now that we've got our exposure adjusted, let's go in and add a little bit of contrast to make our photo pop. I'm going to add just about, about there looks good. And what that's going to help with is adding some of the detail back into our photo to make it seem less flat. I'm also going to down the highlights and down the midtones just a little bit. That looks good right about there. What I also want to do is I want to bring back some detail into these darker areas underneath the pier, the water, and even some of these columns. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to boost the shadows just a tad, probably about right there, bringing some detail back into the darker areas of the photo. I also want to add a little bit more tonal contrast to the photo. I'm going to do that by decreasing the black slider. And what that's going to do is that's going to find all the blacks in my photo and it's going to make them darker. I want a little bit of true black in my photo, but not a ton. That looks good, probably right about there. I think the basic tonality of our photo looks great. Now all I want to do is I want to go down to our color and I want to increase the temperature just a little bit to warm our photo up a bit. I'm doing this so I can bring some color back into the water and the sky and also into these highlights over here on the pier. That looks good right about there. Now that we have the overall tone and color of our photo mapped out, let's go into our HDR look pane and readjust our HDR look. Within the HDR look pane, you'll find all the controls needed to give your photo that HDR look. 
the compression slider is going to deal with the compression of your highlight and shadow details. Increasing compression is going to give your photo more of an HDR look, while decreasing is going to give your photo more of a natural, single exposure look. I like to keep it in the middle, around 100. The detail slider is going to affect the micro contrast within your photo. Affecting the micro contrast within your photo is going to make your photo pop with detail. Adding too much can give you a surreal look, while too little can make your photo look out of focus and soft. I like it around mm, 25, 30. The default for natural is 20, so 25 looks great. Unlike the detail slider that creates micro contrast within small areas of detail, the clarity slider is going to deal with contrast across your entire photo. It's basically your global contrast. I'm only going to turn it up just a tad, just to add a little bit more detail. We can always go back and re-edit that later. As for the last two sliders in the HDR pane, we have the Glow and the Grunge slider. What the Glow slider is going to do is that's going to add a bit of a fuzzy, out of focus feel to areas of contrast within your photo. If I turn up the Glow, you can tell that the areas of contrast have now been replaced with sort of a fuzzy, glowy look. I'm not a big fan of the Glow, so I'm going to leave that the way it is. The last slider on the HDR look pane is the Grunge slider. What the grunge slider is going to do is that's going to decrease the brightness of the shadows, it's going to leave the highlights the same, and it's going to give your photo sort of a dark industrial look. I'm also not a huge fan of the grunge, but if we do want to add that in, we can always do that later within the HDR look pane in the effects module. For now, I think our photo looks great. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it. Now that we have our photo in effects, we can start making creative adjustments to it. You'll see on the right hand side that all of our HDR look controls are the same settings as we had before. We can readjust those at any time, but for now, I like the way the photo looks. I do see on the bottom of the photo, however, that some of the information didn't merge together correctly. All we need to do to fix that is go to our crop tool, hold down the shift key, and drag until we can pull that crop up and remove that information. That looks good right about there. Now that we have our photo cropped, I'm actually going to grab the Level tool to make sure my photo is level. I'm just going to grab the Level tool here, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag on what I know is a straight line. Right there. Now that we have our photo cropped and leveled, let's start adding some effects to it. I'm simply going to hit the Enter key, and it's going to return me back into view mode. The first thing I want to do with this HDR photo when it comes to effects is I want to make these pillars and the bottom of this pier sort of stand out from the water and the sky. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to actually add some dynamic contrast. As you can see, the filter is applied to the entire photo, but I don't want the filter to be applied to the water or the sky. So how I'm going to achieve that is I'm going to go into the masking options within the dynamic contrast. I'm simply going to click on the masking icon right there, and it's going to pull up the masking options. And what I want to do is I want to click luminosity mask. And what the luminosity mask is going to do is it's going to apply a mask to the brighter areas of my image. So if I view my mask, you can see that the mask is applied to the brighter areas within my image. All the white is going to reveal and the black is going to conceal. So if I invert that, you can see now that the mask is going to be applied to the pillars, a little bit of this water, and some of the top of the pier right here. I want a little bit less on the water and more on the pillars. I can do that by using my level slider. By adjusting the levels within your mask, you can fine tune where you want your mask to be applied. There, that looks perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click view. That's going to show me where my mask is being applied on the photo. You can see that if I turn off dynamic contrast, it's only being applied to the pillars and a little bit of this water here. That looks great. Now what we can do is we can refine our dynamic contrast mask. I notice that there's a little bit of contrast still on the water. To mask that out, I'm simply going to go to my masking brush. Make sure it's selected, and I'm going to select the paint out option. To simply toggle between paint out and paint in on your masking brush, hit X on your keyboard. You'll notice that by hitting X, it's going to change the sign within your masking brush to a plus or a minus. A minus is paint out, where a plus is paint in. Because I want to paint out the mask from my water, I'm going to have the paint out option selected. 
Now I can simply go down and brush out the areas of contrast that I don't want to be applied to my water. Now that we've properly fine-tuned our mask for our dynamic contrast, we can now go in and we can deal with the controls for the filter. For this particular filter, you have different types of sliders that deal with different areas of contrast within your photo. I can see now that we don't have too many small areas of contrast. So if we turn up the small slider, it's not gonna do too much to our photo. But if we turn that off and we turn up our large slider, you can tell that it deals with a lot more contrast across a lot more areas of our photo. Same with the medium. I actually really liked how that natural look felt, so I'm going to leave it at natural. That's usually the style I use when I'm using dynamic contrast. Now that we've added dynamic contrast to our photo, I would like to boost up some of the colors a bit. What I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to go to add a filter, and I'm going to select color enhancer. And the great thing about color enhancer in Amon Photo Raw is that it allows you to target specific colors within your photo. I know that I only really want to brighten up the colors within the sky and in the water. So to do that, I'm only going to target those certain specific colors. I'm actually just going to go down to color range. I'm going to select my oranges, my yellows, my greens, aquas, and blues, and I'm simply going to boost their saturation. 15 seems about right. You can always turn it down later, but I like to turn it up just to see where it's at. That actually looks pretty good. Now that we have our colors boosted within our photo, I want to refine our mask so that the colors aren't being applied to the areas I don't want them to be applied to. I don't want the mask to be applied to the areas within the pillar. I only want them to be applied to the sky and in the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to grab the mask that we created before in our dynamic contrast. I'm going to hit copy and I'm going to paste that mask within the mask options of color enhancer right there. Now you can see that the mask is only being applied to the areas that we have masked. But if we invert that mask, you'll notice that the effect is being applied to the sky and the water rather than being applied to the areas on the pier. Now what I want to do is I want to sort of subdue these pillars on the edges right here. They seem a little bit distracting and I really only want this area to be my subject and these sort of lines to lead the viewer's eye into that area where the sunset is sort of reflecting off the water and on the pier here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm simply going to add a vignette. I'm going to go to Add Filter, and I'm going to select Vignette. Whenever I add a vignette to a photo, I like to select Big Softy. I think Big Softy is a pretty good starting point for any vignette, and I like the way it looks on most of my photos. But I don't want the vignette to be applied to the entire photo. I only want it to be applied to the areas within this pillar right here. So how I'm going to do that is I'm simply going to go to the masking options within vignette and I'm going to paste that mask that we had applied to our color enhancer as well as our dynamic contrast. Now you can see that the vignette is only applied to the areas within the pillar. Now what we can do is we can refine our vignette to make it seem a little bit more realistic. I'm simply going to turn down the opacity to about 50% and then I'm going to decrease the size of the vignette so that it really makes these leading lines into the subject of my photo. You'll notice that if I turn the size all the way up, there's no vignette. So turning it down can really pinpoint where you want the subject to be in your photo. The last thing that I would like to do to the photo is sort of bring up this area a little bit with some color and some exposure. To do that, I'm simply going to go to my local adjustments. I'm going to select lighten and I'm going to bring up the saturation to about, oh, about there. And what this is going to do is it's going to add some exposure and it's also going to add a little bit more color to where I paint in the adjustment. I'm going to make sure that my opacity is at about oh, 45 for my masking brush and I'm going to make sure that paint in is selected and I'm simply going to paint in the exposure and the saturation in the areas that I want it. That looks good right about there. And just like with our vignette, I'm going to adjust the opacity of the adjustment to make sure it looks as natural as possible. I think right there it looks great. 
Now the last thing I want to do to my photo is I want to go back to overall settings and I want to add another filter. Now the filter I'm going to add is going to be sunshine. And what the sunshine filter does is it boosts your highlights and it darkens your shadows. This is going to be great for this photo in particular because it's going to brighten these areas in here and darken these areas on the pier. So let's go ahead and let's add sunshine. You can see how that brighten these colorful areas in here, the sky, the water, and darken the areas in the pier. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. You could go in and adjust the opacity of the sunshine filter if you wanted, but I actually like it all the way up. I think it really makes our photo come to life. If you want to toggle between your original photo and the photo you've edited, just simply go down to the preview button. Or you can use backslash on your keyboard. You can see that in not a lot of time, we've really enhanced our photo. Those are some advanced techniques to using HDR with an On1 Photo Raw 2018. I'm Dylan with On1, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more.